Okay, so here you go, we have 5.3, which is about uh, linear programming in two dimensions. So we're gonna, linear programming means you're gonna find maximum or minimum on a function uh, on, uh, on an area. So what we did last time, we're gonna use it and then we're gonna build up a little bit more on that. So this is, uh, there's a theorem about it, like um, that this theorem give us how to, where to find minimum or maximum. And it's proof that the minimum or maximum uh, on a region, it's, uh, <clears throat> if it's bounded, it's on the, uh, on the, uh, it's always exists and it's always on the uh, corner points. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do. <clears throat> So these are the steps you're gonna do, you're gonna follow. The first step, you're gonna graph the region. That's what we did last time, right? We're gonna graph it. Uh, then if it's, uh, so gonna, then you're gonna find the corner points because if the minimum maximum exists, it's gonna be on the corner points. So graph the region, find the corner point. That's exactly what we did last time, okay? So we're gonna do that. And then after that, um, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna uh, construct a corner point table. We're gonna calculate the function. Determine the optimal solution, which means maximum or minimum. Uh, And then for the problem, interpret interpret the solution. If it's a word, word problem, then you're gonna go to step four, okay? So uh, pretty much you're gonna graph it, you're gonna get the corner points, you're gonna do the corner point table, and then you're gonna see which one is the maximum, which one is the minimum. So it's really straightforward. And then if it's applied problem, which means word problem, then you're gonna see if that solution makes sense or not. Okay, and that's always for uh, any word problem or application. After you solve it, you have to see if it makes sense for that specific word problem, right? So let's go ahead and do one of those. So let's do number one. So number one, it says minimize, which means find the minimum of this function Z and the subject to this area. So first I'm gonna graph the area. That's exactly what we did last time. So we're gonna graph it. So first I'm gonna graph my first inequality. We have two X plus Y greater or equal four. So I'm gonna pick zero for X. So when X is zero, Y is four, right? So that's my first point. Then after that, I'm gonna replace Y with zero. So this is zero and I'm gonna get two X equals four. I'm gonna divide by two and X is gonna be two because four divided by two is two. So that's the points I'm gonna to use to graph it. So let's graph it. So I'm gonna graph, uh, let me use color. Okay, and also I have X is greater than zero, Y is greater than zero means I'm gonna first, gonna use first quadrant only. And then <clears throat> I'm gonna graph zero, four. So y is four, that's my first point. And then two, zero, it's here. And then I'm gonna graph that line and now it says greater than zero, that means I'm gonna shade above, right? But uh, because I'm using first quadrant, I'm gonna shade only in the first quadrant. So this is my region here. Okay. It's open unbounded region. It's above this line and only in first quadrant. So this is my region. So now it's open, it's okay. Where are my vertex points? So that's my second step. The vertex points are these two points, right? This one and this one. Now I'm gonna use those two points to, um, to set up my table. And this is how you do the table. So we're gonna, the table is gonna have like 
um, gonna have x, gonna have y, and it's gonna have the function z. So I'm gonna put x, y, and z because the function is called z here. If it's p, q, whatever it is, that's what you're gonna use. And then z, I'm gonna copy that so I can have it here, six x plus five y. So now I'm gonna look at my, how many vertex points I have, two. So I'm gonna need two rows. And then I'm gonna get my <clears throat> numbers from the, I'm gonna get my uh, vertices. So we have corner points. So I have, this is, one of them is two zero and the other one is zero four. So these are my two corner points, yes? And then <clears throat> what you're gonna do, we're gonna use this function Z and plug it in X is two, Y is zero. So when X is two and Y is zero, I'm gonna get Z is what? Six times two, you replace X with two plus five times zero. So we actually evaluate the function with X two and Y zero. And then you're gonna see what you get. And then like five times zero is zero. So six times two is 12. So the value is 12. Then you're gonna do the same with um, zero and four. So replace X with zero, follow the same function and five times four. Six times zero, zero. So we have 20, five times four is 20. So these are the two values we have for these two corner points. If you have more corner points, you're gonna evaluate all of the corner points. Then what you need to do is look what you're looking for. Are you looking for maximum or minimum? You're looking for minimum. So if it's minimum, which one of those numbers is smaller? 12 or 20? 12. 12, so that's my minimum. Okay, that, that's my minimum of the function. So this is how you write the answer. So you're gonna write the minimum is 12 at, you're gonna write what point? X2 and Y0, this is your point. When X is two, Y0, your minimum is 12, okay? And this is the minimum for the given function Z. Okay, now I'm gonna make a note here. If you have a unbounded area, if the, the region is open and if it's open up, you're looking for maximum, there is no maximum. So if the question was find the maximum, the maximum doesn't exist, okay? Because it's open, only the minimum exists for open area, for open up area going up. If your area is up and down, then there is no minimum. Yes, make sense? So here the maximum doesn't exist. Okay, so you said the max doesn't exist when it's bounded. When it's unbounded. 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 Yes. Okay. yes. Now here, this is what they're asking you to find. They're asking to find the minimum also. They're not talking about maximum at all. But here I just wanted to let you know that if you have to find maximum, the maximum doesn't exist. Got it? Any questions? So pretty much that's what you're doing. You're gonna graph it, get the vertices, the, the corner points of vertices, make that little table, calculate the function, and then that's it. If you're looking for minimum, get the smallest number. If you're looking for maximum, get the biggest number. But keep in mind, if it's the area it's open, then you can have minimum, but not maximum, or you can have maximum, but not minimum if it's open. Because if the area looks something like this, so let's say it's like this. So if the area is going like this down and it's it doesn't say first quadrant, for example, then there is no minimum for this one. You got it? Everybody understand that? Okay, so that's how you do all of these questions. So let's do one more. You guys want to do one more? Yes, please. Yeah, let's do number two. Okay, so for number two, we're gonna start with the graphing part first, right? We're gonna graph this. So I'm gonna pick zero for X for my first inequality. I'm replacing x with zero. So I have two y 
equals 8 divided by 2. So y is going to be 4. Then after that, I'm going to replace y with 0, because that's the point I'm going to pick. So 2y, 0. So I'm going to get 4x equals 8. Divide by 4, that's going to give me 2. So this is what I have to graph. So let's go ahead and graph that. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to also have x is greater and y is greater than 0 or equal 0. That means I have first quadrant again. So we're going to graph. So the first point is 0, 4. And the second is 2, 0. So it's technically the same we have above, right? And then we're going to connect them and make the straight line. OK, it says less than 0, so you're going to graph below. And it's first quadrant, so my area, my region is going to be inside this little triangle. So this is my shaded area, OK? Then what I'm doing next, I'm going to get my corner points. So these are my corner points, 0, 0, this one, and this one. And I'm going to set up my little table to calculate the function z. So here we have three. We have three, three corner points. So I have x, y, and z. And this is my z. OK, so I'm going to use 0, 0 is my first one. And then we have 0, 4, and 2, 0. And then you're going to plug it in. So this is my function. 7 times x is 0 plus 8 times 0 going to give me 0. Then I'm going to plug it in 0 and 4. So I have 7 times 0 plus 8 times 4. So that give me 32. And then the last one is going to be 7 times 2 plus 8 times 0 equals 14. So now here we have to see what you're looking for. Because it's a, it's a bounded area, it's closed area, that means you can find maximum and minimum. But here the question is find the maximum. So looking at my three numbers here, which one is my maximum? These three numbers. 32. 32 is my maximum, that's right. Now, if they ask me for minimum, which one is the minimum? <clears throat> Zero. Zero, that's right, that's right, correct. So because they're asking only for maximum, we're just gonna write the maximum is 32 at what point? Zero and four, right? This is the point. Okay, so that's my answer. Um, any questions? Um, professor, I have a question. So yes. uh, how come you included the two zeros? Okay, because, uh, yes, thank you for asking that. Yes, so why are you including the zero, zero? Because this is my region here, it's below. And this region has vertex, uh, vertices at zero, zero, at two, zero, and zero, four. These are the corner points, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Because they they uh, kind of uh, determine where the region is going to be. OK. So that's how you do all of these questions. So here, number four, we have, uh, when you grab this, we have two, we have two uh, inequalities to graph, two lines and also first quadrant, this to give me the first quadrant. So when I pick x for 0 for the first one, I'm replacing x with 0. So it's going to be negative 2y equals 12. And then divide by negative 2. 
So my y is going to be negative 6. So this is the first point. Then I'm going to pick 0 for y. So when y is 0 now, I have 6x equals 12. I'm going to divide by 6. And I'm going to get 2. Oops. Okay, so my point is going to be 2 and 0. So let's grab that. And then I'm going to get the other points. 0, negative 6. So it's going to be something like this. Okay, 0, negative 6. I need to go 6 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and then 2, 0. It's right here. And I'm going to grab the first line. It's going to be the green one. So this is my first line. Then I'm going to grab the second one. Let's use different color. So I'm going to pick 0 for x. So this is 0. And y is going to be 9. Then I'm going to pick 0 for y. And we have 3x equals 9. I'm going to divide by 3. So that will give me 3. So now I have to grab 0, 9, and 3, 0. So we have 0, 9. So it's going to be going all the way to 9. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then 3, 0. It's here. And that's my second line, the blue one. Okay, so we have two lines. And now let's see where we're going to shade. Okay, so I know I'm in the first quadrant. So the first one is the green line. It's going to graph above the line, which means uh, it's going to graph here, above, right? Going to go all the way up above the line. And then the blue line is going to go below, going down here down so and also using first quadrant so my area is going to be shaded inside of this little uh, figure with four sides right we have four corner points here see these are the corner points this one zero zero this point and this point okay so we have these four corner points so let's find them the first one is zero zero obviously. Then this one here was 0 and 9. This one down here was 2 and 0. Now I have to find this point. How you find it? This point is interception between the green and the blue line. So what you need to do is you need to solve the system of equations using the two equations. So the first one using these two, like a system of equations, okay? So <clears throat> how are you gonna find the interception? You're gonna- um, Multiply by, multiply. yeah. If you wanna cancel X or Y, what you wanna cancel? Let's cancel the Y. So if I wanna cancel Y, I need to multiply the second equation by two, right? So I'm going to copy the first one, which is 6x minus 2y equals 12. And then second by 2. So it's going to be 2 times 3, 6x minus, uh, plus, sorry, plus 2y equals 2 times 9 is 18. And then I'm going to add those two equations, y cancel. So I have 12x equals, when I add those two, is going to be 30. And 30 divided by 12 is going to gi give me my x, right? Now, 30 divided by 12 
is going to be 2.5. So let's use 2.5. So my point is going to be 2.5, comma. Now I have to find y. And I can find y when I plug 2.5 into my second equation, for example. So it's going to be 3 times 2.5 plus y equals nine. So I'm plugging into the second equation. Now 2.5 times three is 7.5. So I'm gonna subtract 7.5 in both sides. This cancel. So I'm gonna get y equals, um, <clears throat> what is nine minus 7.5 is 1.5. So this is my point. Let me put a different color. So my point where the two uh, lines intercept are gonna be X is uh, 2.5 comma 1.5. Okay, everybody understand that? So now we have to do the little table. So we have X, Y, and Z. Okay, so we have how many? Four corner points. We have one, two, four. Okay, we have X, we have Y, and we have the Z, which is 30X plus 12Y. So we're gonna use the points. I'm going to start with 0, 0. When you plug 0, 0, it's going to be 0. This is easy to do. Then you have 0, 9. And then you have, I'm going to use 2 and 0. And then I'm going to use 2.5 and 1.5. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in. The first one is 0, obviously. And you're looking for maximum, right? Because if you're looking for minimum, obviously 0, 0 is going to be minimum. But you're looking for the maximum point. So we're going to do 30 times 0 plus 12 times 9. You plug it in 0 and 9. 30 times 0 is 0. Now, which is 12 times 9? It's 108, right? Then you're going to do the next one, which is 30 times 2 plus 12 times zero, which is zero, and that gave me 60. Then we have one more, which is 30 times 2.5 plus 12 times 1.5. Okay, so here we have 30 times 2.5 is 75 and 12 times 1.5 is 18. So 18 plus, seven, plus 75, what you get, 93? Yes, 93. Yes, 93, okay. So these are my numbers now. We have 0, 108, 60, and 93. So which one is your maximum? 108. 108 is the maximum, that's right. And maximum is at 0, 9. So we're going to just write it like maximum is 108 at what point? 0 and 9. Okay, so that's how you do this one. So everything is the same way, pretty much the same idea. Graph it, get the corner points, and plug it in, and then get the maximum, get the minimum. Okay, any questions? No, ma'am. No, everybody good? Okay, so here in this problem, we have word problem application where they give us um, the different um, company makes two types of skis. And we have the labor hour per ski and the maximum labor hour, hour labor hours available per day. So here we have to set up the restrictions and also they have, if the profit is a function 
and you need to find the maximum profit. So we're gonna start setting up the equation and you have to find the maximum. So the first, uh, the, the profit function, you get it from here. So the profit function is gonna be uh, $40 for, so let's say this is the X, where it says X is, what is X? So the tick is X, and let's say this is the Y, the slalom is Y. So we have, um, it's gonna be 40X plus 60Y. So this is my function and I have to find the maximum profit. So I need to find the maximum of this function. That's the goal. Now, first I need to set up my restrictions, my uh, system of inequalities. And I'm gonna get the restrictions from this little table. So the restrictions are, I have uh, fabricating and finishing. So I have two different restrictions. So, <clears throat> Uh, we have 8x plus 6y has to be less or equal because this is all the available is going to be should be less than or equal to 432. And then the second restriction is going to be about finishing. So is the this is a different department. So you have 1x plus 1y less or equal to 56. And why it's a restriction? Because this is available. You can go, you cannot go more than that. And then also because it's a word problem, X have to be greater or equal zero. And Y has to be greater or equal zero because it's application and X and Y represent a number of ski, right? For the, each of the different type of ski. So when I grab this system of inequality, the blue one, and then, <clears throat> I'm going to find the maximum. So pretty much that's what we are doing so far. So let's go ahead and graph. So first, I'm going to grab the first uh, inequality. So when I'm going to press X, replace X with zero. <clears throat> so when I replace X with zero, it's going to give me, um, I need to solve. Uh, so when X is zero, I need to solve six Y equals 432 divided by 6. So 432 divided by 6 is what? 72. Okay. Then I'm going to replace y with 0. And that's going to give me 8x equals 432. So now I have 432 divided by 8. It's going to be 54. Okay. So that's how we get 54 and 72. So these are the points I'm going to graph for the first inequality. Okay, then after that, I'm going to erase this to do the second inequality. And the second inequality, again, I'm going to pick 0 for x and y is going to be 56 and 0 for y is going to be also 56. So these are my points for the second inequality. So let's graph that. So we're going to start graphing. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to graph it over here in front. And I also I know x is bigger than 0, y is bigger than 0. So I'm going to use first quadrant to graph. So we have 0, 72. So let's say this is 50, this is 100. So you can decide how you're going to use your scale. Okay. So 0, 72, let's say this is 72. And the other one is 54. So if this is 50, 54, let's say it's here, 54. And this is my first straight line. Okay, now it says less than, so I'm gonna shade below the line. Then I'm graphing the second one, which is uh, 0, 056. So let's say this is 56. And 56 is after 54. It's going to be the second one. So this is my second line. And also I'm going to shade below. So 
the shaded area is going to be down here, right? So I need to find this point and this corner point. So finding this point is solving the system of inequality of equations now. So I need to solve these two together. So if I want to solve this, I can I can cancel the y, so multiply by negative six. So that give me eight x plus. So I copy the first one. And then multiply by negative six. And six times 56 is, what is that? 336. So I'm going to get 2x equals <clears throat> now 432 minus 336. Oops. 432 minus 336 is 96. And then divide this by 2 is 48. So x is 48. Now I need to find y and I can plug it into the second equation. So I have 48 plus y equals 56. I subtract 48. And that gives me eight. So these are my X and Y. So the point here, the coordinates of this point is gonna be uh, X is, so X is 48 and Y is eight. So now I have all the numbers and I have to find the maximum. So now is the time to set up my little table. We have X and Y and P. <clears throat> now we have four corner points. So zero, zero is one of those. When I plug it in, it's gonna be zero because 40 times zero plus 60 plus zero times zero is zero. And then we're gonna plug it in. Uh, let's see which point we have 0, 056, and then 48 and 8. And what else? Uh, we have 54 and 0. So let's plug it in. So I have 40 times 0 plus 60 times 56. So that's give me, what you got, what you guys get? About 3,360. Yes, thank you. Then let's do this one, 40 times 54 plus 60 times zero. So 40 times 54 is 2,160. And then we have, so 40, 48 times 40, is 1920 plus 60 times 8, 480. And when I add them, it's going to be 2400. Okay, so now looking at this, which one is the biggest one? We're looking for maximum. <clears throat> 3,360. That's right. So this is going to be my maximum. And if they ask, this is the point. Okay. So let's see. The maximum profit is, what is the maximum profit? 3,360. And when, how many? Zero. Tricks key. That was X. 
And how many slaloms key? Uh, 56. Okay, so let's check that. Okay, that's good, fantastic. Okay. And then we have another part. Uh, discuss the effect of Okay, I need to, I don't know, let's see how I can, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this. Let's see if I say, can save. Okay, uh, I'm gonna clear because uh, I can read what it says. So here we have B. It says, discuss the effect of the production schedule and maximum profit if the profit decreased to 54. So what will happen if instead of producing 56 lounge key, if they're producing 45? Oh no, hold on, 45. Oh, okay, so here, this is what it is. Let me write it. So it says, <clears throat> see right now, um, the slalom ski, they sell for 60, right? If they decrease to 45, what's gonna happen? What do you think? The maximum profit Will increase, decrease, or remain the same? Or decrease. Decrease, yes, because the function is going to change, right? So the function we had was um, 40x plus 60y. Now the function is going to be, the profit is going to be um, 40x plus 45y. Okay? Uh, so that means the, the, the maximum profit is going to decrease, right? And it's go, you, you need to say the maximum is going to be in the same, right? Hold on. So can you, can you just plug those, the X and Y that you had for the previous one? In, yes. In, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what you're doing. So it's going to decrease. We need to find the profit. And it's going to be in the same place because the area doesn't change, right? Only the function is changing. So it's going to be 0 and 56 again. And you're just going to plug it that numbers in this new profit function. That's right. Good job. So it's going to be 40 times 0 plus 45 times 56. So the profit is going to be what is 45 times 56, it's 2,000, I'm going to write it here, 2,520, that's what I get, and that's good also, okay, everybody understand that, yes, yes so please. when you change the, the, the function, the profit is changing only, that is going to change only the profit. It's not going to change where the profit is. It's not going to change the. Uh, see, this is the, this is the this table give me the restrictions. So the restriction doesn't change. Okay, only the function is changing. So only the table is going to change. So let's see. The next question is discuss the effect of the production schedule and the maximum profit if it's increased to six seventy five now. So my function is going to be. Uh, now the slalom ski, so this is changing. So it's going to be 40x plus 75y, right? This is my function now. And <clears throat> what's going to happen? Is the profit is going to increase or decrease? Increase. Increase. And you need to find what is going to be the pro and the point is going to be the same, right? So when I plug it in, so I need to multiply 75 times 56, which is 
thank you 4200 okay that's it that's right good job um so everybody understand this one and then yeah. number nine is the same you just have to set up the question and solve it and let's just double check number nine and then you'll be back to solve this uh, select the correct choice uh, in order to maximize or minimize function a uh, linear problem problem must find the what you need to find corner points. corner points yep that's it and then you'll be back yes good job and let's go back and solve the number eight okay so here we're going to do number uh number eight in your homework so here we have uh, the office of high school senior class. They're planning to rent buses and vans. So I put a little stars and hearts next to the information about the bus and information about the vans. So each bus transport 81 students, five uh, ch chaperones, and this is the price, the cost to rent the, the bus. And then you have the same information for the, for the vans. Uh, so the question is, since there, so this is um, the maximum number of students, 648 students. So these are the, how many students we have uh, in senior class. And uh, also we have 60 parents volunteers. So this is the maximum number of uh, chaperones. And <coughs> we need to find the question is how many vehicle of each type the office should rent to minimize the cost? That's the question, to find the minimum of the transportation cost, right? So here, let's, I'm gonna make a little table or something. So we have, um, let's say we have the buses. Let's look at the information about the bus. So how many students the bus can uh, carry? 81 students, right? And how many uh, parents can be there? Five volunteers or chaperones. And what is the cost? It's for the buses, each bus is 1,100, right? Okay, let me make this clear, it's one, 1,100. And then the information about the, the uh, van. So now I'm gonna look, the van has, uh, can carry nine students, one parent, one chaperone. And the cost is $110. Okay, now what we have given, we have the students are, uh, the total number of students is 648 students, right? And the parents are 60 parents, right? And for the price, for the cost, we need to find the minimum cost, right? This is the information. So we're gonna use, let's say the buses, we're gonna use X for the buses. So that's gonna be my X. And the van is gonna be the Y. So using this information, I'm gonna set up my, the, the, the cost function is gonna be using this and you need to find the minimum cost, right? And it's gonna be 1100 X plus 110 Y. So this is the cost function using the information about the money. So now my system of inequality is gonna be from these two columns. So this is where you're gonna get the system of inequality. So first one I have 81 students times X buses plus nine students in Y vans should be less or equal to 648. And then for the chaperones, the same way, 5x plus 1y has to be less or equal to 60. 
because this is the maximum of uh, available uh, students and, and parents. And also because it's a work problem, we have X is greater or equal zero and Y is greater or equal zero. So now we're gonna graph that and we're gonna use the graphing calc utilities in uh, Desmos. So we're gonna use the graphing calculator and we're gonna graph. So the first equation is go inequality is gonna be 81 uh, X plus nine Y um, I don't know if you can use, I'm just gonna use equals 648. And then the second one is gonna be five X five uh, X plus one Y equals 60. That's my second equation. And also first quadrant. So let's look at the graph. So this is how my graph looks like. Now, both of those are less. So technically <coughs> you need to find the area is gonna be, oops, sorry. Let's move it here. So the area is gonna be inside this little, hold on, I'm going backwards. Here you go. So it's gonna be inside this, uh, the, the area is gonna be using this, oh, one, okay, hold on. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am, it's gonna be inside that triangle. It, it's a square, uh, it's a four shapes because you have this, they cross each other. So it's something like we did before. So we need to use this point also where they intercept three and 45. So let's see if three, three and 45 is gonna work. So I have three and 45. So let's see, I just wanna double check this because three times 81, so three times, I'm gonna use the second one. Three times five is 15 plus 45 is 60, yes. So this works and 345 in the second one is gonna be um, 81 times three, what is that? 81 times three, that's 243 and nine times 45, is 405 and that's gonna be, yeah, 648. So this is your right solution. So this is one of the corner points. That's what I wanted to find here, the point where they intercept. Okay, so one of them is, so let's do X and Y and the cost function here. So we have zero, zero is one of the points. Uh, then we have three and 45. And let's see what else. Uh, so this should be zero and uh, twelve. No, this is not twelve. Is outside. So when is gonna this point here? Seventy-two. You know, yeah, I can just use this one. Eight and two. Eight and zero. It would be nine divided. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, I, I just click there. It's good. Eight and zero. Because eight times 81 is 648. Okay. And then the other point we have is going to be zero. And let's see up here, way across the y axis, 0, 060. This point here. 060. Did you guys see that? So if you use Desmos, be careful. You have to, um, you have to uh, just careful with the plug it in the number. So make sure you have the right answers because you have to make sure everything is correct. Okay. So these are my corner points. So far, so good. Any questions? Okay, so these are my points. Now let's go back to my question. And 
So using decimals, we graph this inequality. These are the corner points we get, right? So now what you need to do, we have to, um, we have to calculate. So I have x, y, and this is the function c here. So when I put 0, 0, obviously it's 0. Then I have um, 1,100 times 3 is going to be 3,300 0, 0, plus 45 times, let's do that, 45 times 110 is 4,500. 4, 4,950. That's what I get. Hold on. 45 times, yes. And then you're going to add it to 3300. Zero, zero. It's 80250. So that's the number. Then I'm going to plug it in 8. So when 8 times 1100 is going to be 88 with zeros, two zeros. And then the other one, this is zero. So it's going to be um, 60 times 1110 uh, is going to be 66 six with two zeros, right? So these are the numbers, and then we have to find the minimum. Minimum cost. In this case, would the zero, zero even be? Yes, zero, zero, yes. It's not going to consider zero, zero, because see, that's why the, we have that step four in the beginning. Because if it's worth, pro, in this case, this is by minimum, right? But because... Uh, we still have to do the field trip, right? Obviously, it's minimum if you don't if you don't go to the, that trip, right? But uh, in this case, uh, we need to get the next one, which is going to be uh, which one? Six thousand six hundred. Yes. So that's why uh, we have this step four. So this is going to be the uh, the maximum. I'm sorry, the minimum cost. So let's plug the numbers now. So the question is the office. The officer should rent how many buses? Zero buses and 60 vans. Yeah, zero buses and 60 vans. Okay, and let's check that. Oh, hold on, what's wrong? Uh, what it says? Use the information to create Minimum value. Okay, let's do zero, zero then. Oh no, hold on. Um, 